When we think about encounters with aliens or interdimensional beings, what often comes to mind are the grey aliens with large heads and eyes that have been depicted in popular culture for the past several decades. But my recent research has taken me on a journey to discover that throughout history, there have been many encounters with what can only be described as humanoid beings from other worlds. I have recently been reading a book, The Alien Agenda, by Richard Dolan, where I stumbled across this story of a bizarre encounter a woman had on a train in England. The woman remains anonymous and goes by the pseudonym Lorraine. Lorraine was an American woman in her 20s, studying a semester of an English literature degree in England in 1998. She would frequently travel and explore the UK, as many do, on the public train system. One afternoon, she was travelling from the historic city of Stratford-upon-Avon to Swansea. It was during rush hour, so naturally, the train was full. Lorraine made her way into a packed carriage with people standing in the aisle, and, to her surprise, she found an empty seat. It was a table seat, one of four that are situated either side of a table. There were two other women sat at the table. To Lorraine's left, a woman appearing of Northern European descent captivated the onlooker with her elegance. From the headscarf and the gloves to the newspaper in hand, she appeared experienced yet graceful. Lorraine politely said hello with a sense of intrigue and admiration. And she noticed the woman before her carried eyes that were not just unusually large and round. They seemed to be wearing different colours. The ordinary hazel usually found in eyes were nowhere to be seen. Instead, it was as if Lorraine had encountered an enthralling mix of blue and brown. Despite the eyeglasses obscuring part of her vision, nothing could mask these captivatingly unique irises. To Lorraine's surprise, the woman responded to her greeting with what sounded like a Midwest American accent. The other woman that sat at the table had dark hair. She didn't say anything, but during the brief exchange between Lorraine and the woman with the scarf, she leaned forward as if listening. She moved in a strange way that unsettled Lorraine, and her lips moved silently with no audible words. Lorraine looked around the carriage. In another part of the train car, there was a young man reading a magazine who smiled at her when he caught her looking at him. Lorraine chalked this up to just some strange encounters with some unusual yet friendly people. But what happened next was truly bizarre. From across the aisle, a man's gaze locked onto Lorraine's. His age and demeanour said he had seen his fair share of life. Bald head topping off an ample torso, adorned with jeans and leather jacket. Lorraine's attention was brought to the man's index finger. All of a sudden, she noticed that the skin on the finger began unravelling. Like an item of clothing that had a split seam. She initially thought he must have been wearing an old pair of gloves, but it was clearly the man's skin. She could tell that his skin looked silky and fake. He seemed to be wearing some kind of human suit. She also caught an unsettling look in his eyes before he turned away from her. This whole experience made Lorraine feel lightheaded and sick. She knew something strange was going on, and the people surrounding her were not human. When the train stopped at the next station, Lorraine got up from her seat to leave the train. She didn't care where she was. She just knew she didn't want to be around these people a second longer. However, the man with the unravelling skin stood up at the same time as Lorraine and left the train before she had a chance to. Lorraine sat back down, and looked out the carriage window. She saw the man walk back along the platform, staring directly into Lorraine's eyes as he passed by. His clothes were oddly out of proportion for his body, and his eyes seemed to change as he passed by. The woman wearing the scarf that sat next to Lorraine stared at the man too. 
She then lifted her paper to cover her face from Lorraine and appeared to communicate something with the man on the platform. She then lowered her paper and turned to face Lorraine. We've been here for many, many years, she said. Recalling the moment years later, Lorraine felt an overwhelming sense of bewilderment and confusion as to what this woman was referring to. Was this a comment about her own presence in the train car or something else entirely? Unfortunately, she would only remember the mysterious woman's follow-up statement vaguely that referred to Lorraine as being a star being or a star child. But before she could process these words any further, the next stop was approaching. Lorraine had lost her initial fear of the strangers around her and was feeling relatively safe despite her strong conviction that she was among aliens on this train. Yet, what followed next was perhaps the most incredible event of all. As the train came to a stop, every passenger in the car, roughly 30 to 40 people, stood up in unison with remarkable speed and organisation. No jostling or noise. It was almost as if each person had been part of some sort of coordinated manoeuvre, one which Lorraine could not recall seeing before. In particular, she noticed that one man who had been reading a magazine and smiling at her seemed to be acting like a chaperone for the group. He appeared human, along with a young woman accompanying him. When they passed by Lorraine quickly on their way out, one gave her an amused grin and said, Hello. The next thing Lorraine knew, she found herself sitting alone in an empty train car. She realised that their rapid departure prevented her from seeing where they went or whether they split up in separate directions when they left, a detail which remained unknown even after time had passed since that fateful day many years ago. Furthermore, despite trying hard to remember more details about the incident later on in life, there were memory lapses regarding even basic facts, such as which train station it happened at, leading Lorraine to think, perhaps my brain was shut off. When Lorraine returned back to her college dorm room later on that day, changed into fresh clothes and headed towards the recreation area, where there happened to be a television playing on mute, it was then when everything started making sense again suddenly, leading her to voice out loud regarding what transpired earlier on during the train ride. A friend of hers who passed by just then took it all in stride and told Lorraine he had heard rumours regarding some kind of community located somewhere in Britain, which sprung seemingly out of nowhere with its inhabitants rarely leaving their homes, nor ever seen anywhere else out of there, although its exact whereabouts remain unconfirmed at all times. Clearly aware of how incredulous it all sounded upon recounting it aloud once more after so many years have passed since then, speculations began arising whether this incident might have simply been nothing more than some sort of paranoid delusion experienced by someone living far away from home, or something beyond our understanding altogether, due to perhaps extraterrestrial forces beyond our comprehension at present time. After having met with Lorraine personally while lecturing in Iowa and speaking with her multiple times about this event afterwards, Richard Dolan could confirm firsthand how logically sound yet incredibly detailed were both her descriptions of what happened along with recollections offered without fail throughout their conversations. This left no doubt whatsoever about the legitimacy of this story, in Richard's mind at least, despite his perplexing nature overall, and forever calling into question our customary ways of perceiving reality. The story of Lorraine and her encounter with the humanoid aliens on a train remain unsolved to this day. Despite trying hard to recall more details about the incident, memory lapses regarding basic facts such as which train station it happened at still remain. There is no doubt that what she experienced was something extraordinary and beyond our understanding at present time. 
Whether or not it had anything to do with extraterrestrial forces remains unknown. However, one thing is certain. Stories like these leave us wondering about all sorts of things we don't usually consider in everyday life. It's an incredible reminder that reality can be much stranger than fiction, inspiring us to keep looking for answers, even when they seem out of reach. This story was written and narrated by me, James Deverell. You can dive deeper into this subject by checking out Richard Dolan's book, The Alien Agenda. I'll include a link in the video description. Thank you for watching this video. Again, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you don't already, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to check out the content I am releasing on other platforms such as Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Those that have signed up to my new Patreon account were able to get early access to the audio of this story ad-free prior to my YouTube upload. I have a starting tier of just $3 per month and will soon have a second tier for access to extra content. Right now I'm working on doing two uploads per week to this channel. Depending on the growth of this channel or support from people on Patreon, the next couple of months will determine whether I'm able to continue with this as a sustainable business and do nothing but research and create awesome content for you. Or just keep doing this as a side hustle or hobby and go back down to one upload every one or two weeks. So if you want to support my mission to become a full-time storyteller and content creator, please head over to Patreon and consider signing up for just the cost of one cup of coffee per month. If you, or anyone else you know, has a story about anything related to high strangeness, please reach out to me with a brief description to stories at daredevil.com. I don't need you to write the whole story, so you don't need to worry about being an English major or anything. We'll be doing all the writing. You'll just need to be willing to jump on a call with me so we can have a chat and I can get the whole story. Thanks again for watching.